So I just finished the first MRI that I've had uh, since getting that BB bullet removed from my, from my skull that they found when we were trying to do an MRI back in September. Uh, I, I detailed the whole story in my, my recent vlog, uh, banned from Twitter for child porn the day after getting a bullet extracted from my skull. <laughs> so if you want to know more of those details, you can go watch that vlog. But uh, anyway, um, I, it's a new place this time. It's at a radiology lab. Um, when I got the first one back in September, first I went in to get one and it was actually inside of a hospital and it was like a really nice one with a thing, a TV to watch and everything. But as they started, they were like, hey, there's a piece of metal in your head. And we did x-rays and that's how I found out I had a BB in my head from 20 years ago. And then I went back and I got it like two days later, but that time they put me in a trailer where, you know, it was like a temporary trailer where they had it set up and that one was very noisy and shaky and stuff. Anyway, but this time it's an actual, you know, place and um, there was no TV or music or anything. They do put ear, ear plugs for you because the machine is very loud and then this place they tucked me in really tightly with um, pillows and stuff because, uh, you know, you if your head moves like at all, it messes up the skin. Um, they also put an IV in um, for, a, for contrast, like they put something into your blood, um, to provide contrast, um, when they're doing the MRI, which I wasn't expecting, but it wasn't too bad. Um, I mean, I'm not a fan of needles, but the biggest thing is that when I was in my, uh, doctor office uh sometime last year getting blood drawn for tests and somehow they managed to poke me in just the right way that I almost blacked out and it's apparently something that happens pretty often I forgot the actual term for it but basically it's just they poke something in your body that makes your body think that your blood pressure is is dropping and it's just a reaction to that so I don't know anyway um but yeah it wasn't too bad they had me keep my mask on the whole time um, I've been double masking, but I took the the metal wire one off because you know no metal, and I and I wore this one, which is not today COVID from uh, Vault Thirty One Bar, which is this gamer bar down the street from us that we love and that has really been struggling financially because uh, you know COVID. So they have their own Twitch show actually. I think it's called the Wastelander Show or something like that. And um, they haven't been able to open to the public for a while, but you can still order food and cocktails to go from them. So we try to we try to buy stuff from them, you know, at least every couple weeks just to try to keep them in business. You know, the locally owned small business kind of needs help. Maybe stop giving all the PP, PP loans to fucking giant chain, national chains, but you know, this is, this is America. We're, we're super rich people always benefit. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head home now. Um, my mom, honestly, my dad and I are still kind of amazed that she's still alive because she's just very weak and like she she almost acts a little bit like a like she has dementia now because she she doesn't like neither of my parents have ever shown real any signs of dementia I mean we all have those moments where we forget something but luckily you know neither, neither of them has ever shown signs of Alzheimer's or anything like that but my mom is just so weak she's dehydrated but it's hard to get her to even drink water um, I have to like kind of hound her after every sip um, last night um, the the nurse the hospice nurse told us to give her this anti-anxiety and also like breathing helping thing or whatever lorazepam something like that um and it's a little tiny pill and i was trying to get her to take it and it was just it was scary because it's like she put her hand out for it and i put the pill in her hand and then she like dropped it and then she was like where is it and I, it's just it was it was jarring because my mom has always been sort of a dynamo and my dad honestly like we always thought my dad would be the first one to go because he's always been kind of anxious and frail and even more so now of course um and my mom was always the like charge in and do things like she's always she's been obese my whole life but she's still had a lot of energy and like she was always you know falling for pyramid schemes and stuff because she thought like I'm gonna be a realtor I'm gonna be a whatever you know I'm gonna work on computers or whatever so it's just it's really weird um I am a little jealous when I have like, you know, 50 year old followers tell me about their parents still being alive at like 90 and here my mom is dying at I think 74. But on the other hand, a lot of people don't get their parents for even that long. So yeah, I better go home and um, relieve my dad. Um, 
it's sort of starting to snow. It keeps jumping between snow and rain. Um, it'd be nice to have snow for the kids to play in, but at the same time, snow is cold and scary to drive in. So <laughs> mixed feelings in that regard. Um, I did, uh, I did think last night, I mean, most of last night was thinking like, is mom going to die over the course of the night? Uh, whatever. But when I wasn't thinking about that, um, I was thinking about the future of topless topics and just my content making in general. And I'm kind of at the point now where I'm just really tired of spending so much time dealing with the censorship. And of course the whole thing with Vimeo where they're, they're punishing me for people actually watching my videos. They're, they're wanting to charge me even more money because people are watching my videos. Meanwhile, YouTube would actually reward me for having a lot of views, except that YouTube keeps banning all my stuff. <laughs> Anyway, so here's what I think I'm gonna do. Um, I already have like four or five videos that I already shot and I just have to finish editing and putting them up. Of course, I don't have a place that I can safely put the uncensored version up right now, short of going to like an actual porn site, which I don't wanna do. Um, so I'm putting the uncensored versions up as I'm d uploading them directly to OnlyFans and making them a paper post, which I fucking hate doing, but the goal is to raise enough money to just rent hosting directly from like AWS or something like that and then hopefully not have to deal with so much fucking bureaucratic uh, censorship bullshit um, provided I don't post stuff that's actually illegal supposedly I should be okay it's just so fucking insane that I have to deal with all this just over female nipples that's it just you know just exactly like male nipples just that's it female nipples can't fucking post them anywhere, but you know, white nationalists and conspiracy theorists are, are welcome mats out right in front. Facebook, YouTube, all the rest. Same old bullshit. Anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the uncensored version on OnlyFans, and then I'll keep putting up my super censored versions on YouTube, on Top Topics TV and Top Topics Show. Um, those get taken down too sometimes, but you know, if they delete my account, they delete my account. Um, and in the meantime. I'm going to try to keep doing these like daily vlogs or at least semi daily vlogs, at least for now, um, kind of as a sort of form of therapy <laughs> to get through, uh, my mom dying and everything else. Um, and I will keep doing the Plex Storm Saturday live streams, at least on the days that my husband is able to stay home and watch the kids. But I think I'm going to devote most of my other energy. I'm not going to bother being topless or naked or anything like that anymore. Um, because it's just not worth the fight to try to find a place that I can even upload those videos. Um, I'm going to kind of go back to, so I have this old, old, old channel that I've had basically since the beginning of YouTube and it was originally called Games Are For Fight and then a couple of years before I stopped updating it, I tried to rebrand a Sari Got Game, but like YouTube is limited in how they let you rebrand stuff. But I, I still have all these business cards left over that say Sari Got Game, so I figure I might as well, you know, use those up. Um, and then I also have another channel I started, but I haven't really uploaded anything to it called The Feminist Gamer. And my idea for that channel was going to be, um, you know, I'm really into video games. I've always been into really, really into video games, but it'd be kind of interesting to give it sort of a feminist perspective where it's like, you know, as a, as a girl who's, who's played games and always had to put myself in the shoes of a straight white male, like... <laughs> What is it like playing a, char a game where I actually, you know, not only can I make a character that looks like me, but it actually affects the plot somewhat. Like, God forbid, you know, we have any plot centric about a, a character that's not a straight white male. Anyway, um, so what I'm thinking is I'll just start making, you know, gaming videos or whatever again, whether they're Let's Plays or game reviews or whatever. I will do them shirt, wearing a shirt. Um, <laughs> And I'll put them on Feminist Gamer and on Terry Got Game. And then as far as Topless Topics goes, I don't know, I'll put these vlogs up on Topless Topics. And if I feel like it, I'll upload the videos to the top. Like, it doesn't matter, right? Like, you know, I have far more subscribers on Topless Topics than I ever did on my gaming channel. But almost all those subscribers are just idiot fucking porn people looking for porn on YouTube because they're too stupid to go to an actual porn site. So I don't care about them. Um... But basically just kind of make it more like a hobby than a, a career um, because I've been treating it like a career for years and I'm just so burnt out. And I mean, if I was able to just create my topless content and put it up there without having to deal with all the censorship and the bans and the, my channel getting held ransom by Vimeo and all this shit, I would happily do that. But... 
since I'm the only person that does all of Tapas Topics, I'm thinking I, I'll just, you know, give myself a bit of a break, you know, with COVID and my, my kids going crazy and my mom dying and everything and just not fight the man as far as female nipples go for a little while. And um, it'll be a test to see, you know, how many of my followers actually are interested in me as a person, you know, me as a person with opinions and whatnot enough to watch me even when I don't have heinous female nipples visible. Um, I'm not expecting a lot to come over, but that's okay. That means that, you know, only the good, the good, the best are going to be uh, coming over. All the idiot perverts who only watch to masturbate to my videos. I don't give a shit if they watch my new stuff. <laughs> good riddance. Um, anyway, yep, I'm going to drive home and relieve my dad and see if my mom died while I was getting my MRI. So, peace out.